Banish boredom. Aging with humor. Ah, retirement. We get to kick back, relax, and do things we never had time for when we were working. A time to pursue passions, travel the world, and enjoy moments with loved ones. That's phase one. Vacation time. But what happens when the excitement wears off and boredom sets in? That's phase two. Is that all there is? I retired close to 2.5 decades ago. I can tell you firsthand that avoiding boredom is a perilous journey. It starts innocently. You have free time, so you decide to take up a hobby. That's phase three. Trying to become productive again. Perhaps painting or woodworking or yoga might work. You're eager to have something new and challenging to focus on. For a while, it's wonderful. You learn new skills, meet people, and feel fulfilled. Inevitably, the honeymoon period ends. You realize painting isn't as exciting as you thought. You're not good at it, or it doesn't hold your interest. So, you move on to the next thing. This pattern continues with different hobbies, activities, and anything to keep boredom at bay. Eventually, you feel you're going through the motions. Not enjoying anything, but too scared to stop because you don't want to be bored again. At first, I tried stand-up comedy, making people laugh by writing and performing my comedy routines. However, somewhat introverted, I preferred to move behind the scenes, writing jokes for other comedians. Then I took up dance classes like salsa, swing, and hip-hop, and thus, I hit the dance floor, thinking I was John Travolta in the movie, Saturday Night Fever. After that wore off and I wore down from the exercise, I explored the world of wine by attending tastings and learning about different varietals. This lead to lawn gnome collecting. I started a collection of quirky lawn gnomes to help decorate my garden. Then, gourmet cooking, experimenting with recipes. I invited friends over for themed dinners. Of course, this led to mystery dinner parties. I hosted murder mystery dinner parties for friends and family, or whoever was available. Becoming more extroverted, I moved into karaoke, belting out my favorite tunes at karaoke nights and embracing my inner rock star, thinking this time that I was Elton John. After that, it was comic book collecting. As a kid, I collected comic books, so I thought it might be fun to attend conventions dressed as my favorite characters. My spouse thought I looked terrific as Superman, but didn't appreciate my Batman outfit. You will follow a similar pattern, but remember, the key to a fulfilling retirement is to find hobbies that bring joy and laughter into your life. Mix and match these ideas or come up with your own pastimes. Beware of pressure from others. It seems everyone expects you to be living your best life in retirement, constantly on the go and trying new things. Your friends and family ask what exciting things you have planned, and you feel you have to come up with something impressive to say, like skydiving, which I tried. But sometimes you want to stay home and watch Netflix. And that's okay. That's phase four. Aka indolence or sloth if you are into mammals. It's okay to be bored sometimes. It's okay to not have every moment of your retirement planned out. Of course, telling yourself that it's okay to be bored is easier said than done. When you're used to being productive all the time, it's hard to give yourself permission to relax and do nothing. But trust me, it's worth it. Here's the problem. If you're constantly avoiding boredom, you're not living in the moment. You're thinking about what you will do instead of enjoying what you are doing. And that's no way to live. What's the solution? How do you avoid the perils of avoiding boredom in retirement? The answer is balance. Balance is the key to a happy retirement. This is phase 5, the sweet spot. It's about finding a mix of activities that you enjoy and that keep you engaged, without overloading your schedule or stressing yourself out. It's about being honest with yourself about what you want to do, even if that means saying no to things that sound exciting but don't interest you. It's also about giving yourself permission to be bored. To embrace the downtime and the muted moments. To sit in your favorite chair with a book and not feel guilty about it. This is difficult for both Catholics and Jews, raised on guilt. And above all, it's about being kind to yourself. Retirement is supposed to be a time of relaxation and enjoyment, not a never-ending quest to stay busy and entertain. So go ahead, take a nap, or watch that cheesy movie you've been meaning to see. Spend an entire day doing nothing. And don't feel guilty about it for a second. In the end, the perils of avoiding boredom in retirement are nothing compared to the joy of living a balanced, fulfilling life. So take a deep breath, relax, and enjoy the ride. It's going to be a wild, wonderful, occasionally boring journey.
Aging with Humor by the Retirement Coach is a YouTube video channel that takes a light look at life for the plus 50 set. I retired at age 54. That was 26 years ago. I have been writing popular retirement humor newspaper columns ever since. I also record Retirement Coach podcasts. As we age, the best way to cope is with a daily dose of humor. Please add your comments to this video and pass it on to those who might appreciate some gentle humor. I welcome your thoughts and suggestions. I welcome your likes. I welcome your subscriptions at no cost. If you click the logo on the bottom right hand corner on each screen, you can subscribe to Aging with Humor. New videos will automatically be sent your way, and you will not have to search for this channel. Thanks for watching.